everyone, this is Richard from M1 and today I'll be performing and showing you three activities based on the topic light. So the first one is refraction of light through a glass slab and the second one is refraction of light through a triangular glass prism and the third one which is the most interesting one is the dispersion of white light into seven colors. So let's proceed on. So normally when we give an incident ray like this, you can see that it goes without any deviation straightly. But now what we'll do is we are going to take a glass slab and place it in the middle of a paper. And now just observe what is happening and I'll tell you why it's happening later. So I'm giving the incident ray over here like this and it's going over here and not in this line. Now why is this happening? So that's because Friends, now first the light moves from a lighter medium to a denser medium that is from air to glass. So now what happens is the light gets bent towards the normal. So the black line represented over here is its normal and the green line which is there over here is bending over towards the normal. And now again it should have gone straightly like this, right? Again why did it bend? That's because when light moves from a denser medium to a rarer medium, it gets bent away from the normal. So this is the normal over here and this is the emergent ray. Okay, so now just observe once again and you will be able to see it very clearly. So as you can see, I am incidenting it over here and it's coming out from this end. So now let's compare these both rays. Just extend this incident ray backwards and compare this incident extension with the uh, emergent ray. So we observe that these both are parallel to each other and they will never meet each other. And the distance between these both rays is known as the lateral shift. So now let's move on to the second activity which is refraction of light through a triangular glass prism. And now I'll be again fixing these four pins over here to make sure that you know the paper doesn't move because I'm counting the angles in these activities are very important. So now we have taken a glass slab of triangular glass prism over here and I'll be placing it in the middle of a paper and then I'll just trace its borders out and as you can see I've already done that for you. Now let's say suppose I want a, the light to strike the prism on this point over here. Just extend a line from there and mark two points A and B. And now I'm going to take two green color pins and put it one on point A and another on point B. So now we have to take the prism back again and place it over here. And now we have to take two more pins and place it in such a way that when we look from this side, all these four pins must appear as if they are on a straight line. Okay. So now as you can see, it looks as if all these four pins are on a straight line. Okay, so now let's get back to the normal position. And now let's remove all these pins and don't forget to mark these points. Okay, so I'm just going to remove them. And now what we'll do is we'll extend this incident ray backwards and we'll also extend the emergent ray backwards. So now what we are going to do is we are going to measure the angle of deviation. So that is nothing but it, the light should have actually gone like this but it went like, like this, got refracted like this and it emerged like this. So now the angle which is formed over here is known as the angle of deviation. And let's measure it with the help of a protractor. So as you can see, I've taken a protractor over here and when you calculate it, it's making almost 42 degree. Okay, so now let's measure the incident ray also. So as you can see, it's also again making a nine, uh, 60 degree with the normal and the emergent ray is making almost uh, 38 degree with the normal. Yes. So now I know all this looks a bit complicated and it's a bit difficult to understand. So now the sole purpose of this project is to make you understand how light behaves when it passes through a prism. So now I'll do this easily by showing you in an easier manner. I'll take the glass prism back and I'll take the laser light over here and I'll just give the incident ray over here and you see how beautifully it emerges from this side and not like that. Okay. So yes so as you can see it's coming from this side and now it's not going straightly like this okay so let's get back 
So that's how sim we can simply easily and beautifully illustrate how the light behaves when it passes through a prism. Now let's move on to the last and the most interesting activity which is dispersion of white light into seven colors. Okay, so yes. Now what I'll do is I'll just place a cardboard box like this over here for a support and I'll take a triangular glass prism over here and place it over here. Okay, so now what I need is I need a source of white light and for, we can even use sunlight but to, may, to show it more clearly to you people, I'm going to use the mobile torch for more clear understanding. So let's on the torch and I'll switch off the lights. And as you can see, a beautiful band of colors is formed over here. And this band of colors is known as the spectrum. And this process of the white light splitting into seven colors is known as dispersion of light. Okay, so now the same concept or the phenomenon behind the formation of the rainbow is this only and you know friends the first person to try this activity on a glass prism was by done by isaac newton and that's all about today's video and i hope you all enjoyed this video and learned something new from this video thank you everyone